Both of them can have allies. That's okay. But my father stressed quite a lot that this needs to be the one main oppressed fighting a main oppressed. After that, you need a counter preparation. What's the counter preparation? Is the moment in which you see uh, the will of the oppressed, in which you can identify what was the will of the oppressed. In Jana Sanskrit, I think I've uh, talked about Jana Sanskrit before in this room, a huge movement in India with more than 300,000 people doing uh, that Frankie uh, had the chance to, to visit, maybe some other in the room. Uh, they make a play about patriarchy, a beautiful play about patriarchy, the golden girl. At a certain moment, you see a girl, she's studying, the brother is studying too, the mother calls for help in the kitchen, none of them move, the father arrives, takes the book out of the hand of the girl, throws it in the ground, now you go to study. There was a moment in which we were able to understand what was the will of the protagonist. The moment in which she was reading, she wanted to study, she wanted to keep on studying. As my father would put it years ago, I don't know if you put that in the same way or no, it's fiat of the oppressed, it's not fiat of the depressed, in the sense that we are not here to replace the will. We are there to, to explore the tactics to have the will fulfilled. <coughs> Is it clear what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a fiat of the oppressed and not fiat of the depressed, in the sense that it's not about people that do not know their will, do not know their desires, do not wish anything. It's about people that are, will try and will be defeated in their attempt to fulfill it. Clear? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have a peripecia. Peripecia, it's a Greek word that uh, means something like, uh, I think we have someone from Greece, uh, you are. What's so the word? Peripecia. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a peripato, it's yes, a exactly. It's the Brazilian. Uh, oh, well, okay. actually, even in English, you write it like this, no? Peripetia? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. So, peripetia, that uh, means uh, something that twists in the other manner. At least that's how I learned it. Uh, twist on the other side. Why? Because this will will face that power, and by facing it, it's going to go in, in the manner that was not expected. In the middle of the peripasse, at a certain point of the peripasse, you need what my father called a Chinese crisis. Why Chinese crisis? Because it seems that in Chinese, you don't have a single ideogram to express what we express in Chinese. In Chinese language, sorry, uh, you don't have a single ideogram to express what we express with the world. The crisis, you have two. One of them means danger, the other one means possibilities. Dangers and possibilities. So there is a moment in the Forum Theater in which you need to show that there is uh, the possibility for the, a power shift, a possibility for change, a possibility in which the dice are rolling, in which the things are not completed. My father would say that the opposite, opposite of a, a Chinese crisis would be someone with his hands tied on the back uh, back to the wall, blindfolded, 12 soldiers ready to shoot, the captain already uh, ready to go to say one, two, three, fa, the joker, the mediator, stop and say, replace the protagonist. <laughs> this man is going to die. There is no way that this person is going to survive. So that would be the anti-Chinese crisis. The uh, Chinese crisis that therefore is the entrance door for your possible spectators. spectators. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Is no, the moment in which no, people no. are going sorry, to replace. Sorry, could you, could you explain that again, please? The peripetia just... thing, the peripetia thing and the Chinese crisis thing. Okay, so. the peripetia, mm, there's not a real need. It's just a steps in which the will of the oppressed confronts mm -hmm. the power of the oppressor. Okay. But in this confrontation, there must be a moment in which things could have... A, gone right. differently. There could have been a different outcome. Something could have been done. And that's yeah. the Chinese crisis. And that's the Chinese right. crisis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's the entrance door, which doesn't mean that the, your public cannot, uh, uh, that the public have to enter only through this entrance door. You can make other moments, uh, they can choose other moments in which to enter. Uh, just to, to give, so that's the first, first forum that I remember of, that I've seen. I don't know how old I was, 
uh, and it was back in Brazil, and it was about uh, pregnancy in teenagers. There is a teenager, she's pregnant, she says to the mother, the mother says, accept it, but she says, well, I'm going to have to talk with your father. She goes talk with the father, and the father, back in Brazil, back in the days, but that's something that <coughs> could easily still happen, answers back saying, look, you are pregnant, you are not uh, married. Uh, if you are pregnant and you are not married, it means that you are no longer a virgin, but you are not uh, with someone. Therefore, we are not my daughter any longer. If you are not my daughter, you are, don't have to stay in my house. You leave the house. Okay? Is it clear what I'm saying? Yeah. Many women entered the moment of the conversation with the father. And I remember that one of them raised her hand and said, No, no, I don't want to enter in the moment of the talk. I want to enter before. And she wanted to enter into a moment in which the father would come back from work very tired, putting his foot like this, the uh, wife would come, take the shoes and put some slippers. She wanted to in enter into that moment. So, okay, the father arrived, the father sits, the father puts the, fi figures like, uh, the feet like this, and immediately he received the two slippers in his face <laughs> that the woman sent uh, to his face. And I think it was very clever, actually, because what she was saying, this woman, or at least what I understood, is that you need to change the whole relationship if you want to have a different outcome in this conversation. Mm -hmm. As long as the relationship, you are so submissive, that it's only mm -hmm. the guy only does this, that you run to, then you won't have any change here. Is it clear what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, okay, so you create a door, but it doesn't mean that the, the people will see that that's the only place where there is intervention that are possible. Is it clear what I'm saying to now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have questions regarding this? No questions? Uh, actually, can you just tell me what those two words are there? On the Again, it's oppressor and oppressed. Yeah, it's peripatia. Peripatia. Ah, ah, I forgot to explain this one. Yeah. Uh, the last one, sorry about that. The, I really need to work on my campaign. <laughs> 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 Counter-oppressor, counter-preparation, counter-preparation, counter okay, <laughs> defeat, always, 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 a forum theater ends up with a defeat, why? Because otherwise we would be giving advice to the people, yeah. when confronted to this kind of situation, do this, do this, do that, and then the situation will be solved. We are not giving advice, we are not telling people how they should do it. We need to construct those answers with the public. And therefore, we need to have a defeat because the defeat is kind of the question mark of the question that we address to the audience. What would you do in order to not finish as our protagonist finished? Clear? Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. So, can I ask something? Yeah, go ahead. Because when I was doing this all those years ago, <coughs> I remember that um, the protagonist should always at the beginning be want to be happy, okay, successful, and want want something. And by the end of the defeat, they are no longer happy and no longer successful, but they still want. They still desire. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can make it this way. No problem at all with that. Yeah, it's just uh, so that the relationship mm. with the public. If if you want, if you're doing it with a group of young people about, I don't know. It could be anything, any kind of teenage issue. If it relates to them and they see themselves being happy and successful and wanting something, and they see the end of it, it really relates to them more, mm. more clearly. Mm. Look, uh, as I said, this is the drawing uh, from my father that I'm explaining as he would explain, uh, or that he did explain many times when I was there. Uh, maybe he explained in other ways. I'm just uh, giving you this one so you have the basic things. Uh, but yes, I think that it adds to the thing that uh, at the end we see that uh, the protagonist is not happy with uh, the defeat. Um, yeah, that he doesn't want to suffer, I don't know, domestic violence, uh, racism by the police, and all those subjects that we've been talking about. Is it clear? Yeah, can you yes. just talk about counter preparation? Uh, uh, okay, counter preparation is the moment in which we see what is the desire of the protagonist. Yeah. Okay? in which we understand what is the desire of the protagonist. It's for the audience to have a moment in which they can identify. This is what the protagonist wants. Okay? Clear? Can I move yeah. forward? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. 
this works in countless situations have been working for years but then there is those problems that i've told you already one size doesn't fit all and the second thing is that these have an embedded ideology too have a tendency to represent the world as if oppression was a one-to-one -one issue when you stress a lot that is the relationship between the oppressor and the oppressed that should be the very core of the play you present reality in such a way that oppression is this inter-individual relationship, one-to-one -one relationship. One-to-one -one relationship here. And to depict reality, reality like this, to frame the question like this, have the tendency, and people that saw many, many form fields, I believe that you will agree with me, that this structure have the tendency to uh, formulate the answer, the question in such a manner that you have three kind of answers that are the most uh, frequent that you have. To the question of the domestic violence, and again, I'm not taking domestic violence because uh, for any other reasons than the fact that it is a massive subject within the field of the press. It's been dealt by I don't know how many hundreds of forum theater all over the world. So, if we represent a reality like this, we will have a first kind of answer that will be the woman that decides to leave her house. We don't know how she can decide it. We don't know if there is shelter enough in the uh, housing enough for those victims. We don't know that. We don't know if there is a wage gap. We don't know where she's going. We don't know anything about that. All of those things are out there, what is only stress is the capacity for deciding. Uh, so I, uh, I call that the abstract heroism. Because it's a heroism that we don't know how it's grounded. There is nothing concrete. It's just the abstract capacity of deciding. No, I don't want no longer. Bye. And never again I will see you. And that we see over and over in so many forum theater. There is another uh, one that, again, taking the example of domestic violence, would be the perpetual adaptation. Perpetual adaptation is the woman that uh, makes the, the, the favorite dish. Is the woman that tries to avoid being the victim of the violence that night. And she can uh, have certain success. But the power balance between her and the husband never changed, remains the same. That night, she was not beaten up. That night, the slave didn't have the, the crack of the whip in his back. But the slave master remains with the whip on his hand. But the violent husband remains with the capacity <coughs> of perpetrating violence. So it's the perpetual adaptation in the sense that you never do something in order to break this power relationship. Is it clear? And then there will be a third one that would be, uh, that is less common, I would say, that is the eyes in the eyes. Uh, eyes in the eyes, again, in this uh, festival in Austria that I've been telling you about since, since yesterday. And you're going to think that's the worst festival that ever happened in the world. No, it's just a Fiat of the Press Festival. Uh, so what was, there was a group from Iran, and they just had a big uprisings in Iran, and they were doing a play uh, like uh, uh, Antigone, a little bit. Someone got shot, uh, the sister comes to claim the body, but uh, the, the army, the soldiers, are letting the body to rot uh, in the streets. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. So many interventions, at a certain point, there was a woman, I remember that she, well, anyway, her nationality doesn't matter, she was very uh, talented, or she was very emotional by seeing the play. The fact is that as soon as she arrives on stage, she's crying. And she's crying, she's crying, she's crying. She moves very slowly towards the guard. She moves slowly towards the guard. She takes the body of the brother. She <coughs> leaves always her eyes locked in the eyes of the guard. She leaves, she leaves the stage and leaves with the body. Don't try this at home, basically. <laughs> uh, that doesn't, it's very unlikely that it works. 
The idea is that I need to show to the oppressor how much is going is making me suffer, <coughs> so he understand uh, the suffering that I'm receiving, and therefore he's no longer willing to dehumanize myself, and therefore he gets rehumanized. <laughs> it's bad for your health. <laughs> it's bad for your health for trying it. And still, it's the responsibility of the oppressed to touch the heart of the oppressor. Yeah. It's still the responsibility of the oppressed. Oh, so you died. So you weren't able to touch his heart, no? I, I, I'm not a fan. I'm not saying that it never it? works. What were you calling it? Eyes in the eyes. Eyes in the eyes. Yeah, I know I should work on a better name. <laughs> but you know. Look at the name of my school, People's Theatre School. So. <laughs> I'm not so good with titles. Uh, can I move? Uh, uh, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry again. What was the very first one? I got the, the second The first one is the abstract heroism. The second is the perpetual adaptation. Perpetua. Uh, perpetual. Yes, per perfect. Uh, forever ongoing adaptation. Is it clear? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, eyes in the eyes. I'm not saying that uh, it never works. I'm not saying that that's the only answer. But uh, if you see many film theaters, you think that uh, you see that there is a part time. Yeah. Yeah. And it is there. There is also another one that I didn't say uh, like this, but it's a little bit like abstract theorism. Is the person that goes on stage and say no. This is no longer possible to do. We need to do something about it. Turns to the audience <laughs> and they say, let's do something about it. This in Festival of Fiat of the Press, imagine the happiness of the people. Because there is those people that are not a spectator, they are serial spectators. No, they, 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 what they want the most in life is to get on stage. Let's do something about it. Everybody oh, goes on stage and yes, it's so easy to organize a strike. Why didn't you thought about that before? <laughs> you understand what I mean? Yeah. yeah, okay. So let's move, uh, if that's okay. Uh, what did, uh, Sorry again? That's the second. Uh, that would be the second. Uh, the perpetual adaptation. Perpetual adaptation. Clear? What yeah, I can move. I, what does eye to the eye actually mean? What do you mean? Is because I didn't <laughs> find a name. If you found a better name, uh, <laughs> give it to me. Uh, I did the eyes because I saw that uh, in this. Uh, so trying to get empathy. Yeah, it's trying to get the empathy of the oppressor. Yeah. Perfect. So soften the heart of the oppressor. I, 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 it's been a year. I, you should have told me that before I did my book. Uh, uh, searching the empathy of the oppressor. It's perfectly well uh, what you said. That's exactly this. Searching the empathy of the oppressor. Be sure that I will, in the okay. next one, I will, and I will say that it's me that invented. Uh, no copyright. <laughs> I'm going to go outside to cry a little bit. Uh, so, uh, the problem with uh, this dramatic is that most of the times it creates situations in such a way that is the relationship between those two characters. Without seeing that if this character over there is taller than the other, it's not because of him. It's because he's in a house full of steels, full of pillars. And those pillars are not discussed. And so we need to bring back in those pillars. And there must be very different <coughs> uh, manners of doing it. But the one that I found the most uh, interesting for me, at least at the, till this moment, is inspired by a movie that I saw that was called Black Natchez. Black Natchez is a movie by this guy called Ed Pincarius. It's not so, such an easy movie to see, to, to find in the internet. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe with uh, this uh, Streamio. Streamio, uh, young people, you should know what Streamio is. Yeah. Yeah. Streaming. Uh, Streamio, a program that allows you to see everything, even if uh, it's... Uh, okay. Yeah, even if you have to pay for it, uh, but uh, then you don't have to pay for it. Can you what? edit this part out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see for free Netflix, you can see for free everything. Streamio. Uh, Streamio, it's called. Uh, uh, I can't see that you reach the peak of attention yeah. <laughs> of the class. It was Streamio. Streamio. I put the name after. Is that okay? 
So there is this program that allows you to go. But and anyway, let's go back to the to the workshop. I know that's not going to be as interesting, but still. Uh, so uh, Black Natchez. Black Natchez is a movie that was done at the, the very beginning of the civil rights movement, as far as I remember, uh, in the U.S. in the city of Natchez. That's a city that is in Mississippi. Yep. Yep. The movie is a documentary movie, a direct documentary, this kind of documentary that they call direct documentary, in which uh, the movie starts uh, when the car, when we hear the news, that the car of the leader of the NAACP, National Alliance for the Advancement of Colored People, was bombed. The leader is between life and death. We don't know if he's going to survive or not. So we received this news. And uh, quite immediately, we are going to uh, follow uh, for a moment certain characters. And those characters are the men that arrive after talking with the mayor. They went to, to see uh, the mayor because they asked for the permission to make a march in front of the town hall. They were denied the permission. No, you have the right to make a march in the black neighborhood. You don't have to right to come in the middle of town. Those men arrive and the women from the movement are extremely upset about, uh, with them. You asked to go only men so it would be serious. So you would be taken into consideration by the mayor. And you bring us what? Absolutely nothing. You think that the next time that there will be a commission is going to work like this? Be well aware it's not going to happen. And the men are not in an easy manner, but they try to defend the idea. But no, at the same time, look, you need to understand that this and that. Then after, what we're going to see is another contradiction, because there is a guy, that he, a black person, <coughs> that he arrived with his rifle. If the leader dies, I'm going to the white neighborhoods, and he's not going to be the only one dying tonight, rest assured. I'm going to start shooting at white people, till they kill me, till they shoot me down, I will be there with my guns. But you are completely crazy. What are, what are you doing? I'm not crazy. You are crazy, because what's going to happen after they're killing you? They're going to kill some of us also. I don't, that's precisely what I want. Because if they come in the neighborhood and they kill some black people, maybe some other black people will be inspired by example, and they will go to the white neighborhood till the moment that the fear will change side. And that is what we need. We need to make in such a way that the fear change side. And I can die, I don't care. Because what I want is for other people to follow my example. I, my life is not, but it's not like this, but you are completely, uh, you're an idiot, they're going to kill. And they start arguing with each other. Then we see another contradiction, that is a guy that is more radical than the NAACP, and he goes like and say, look, we might have not the right to make a manifestation in front, to make a march in front of the town hall, but we have the legitimacy for doing it. We have the legitimacy for doing it. So, fuck them, then let's go and let's uh, bring all the people together and let's go there. Should we follow him? Should we not follow him? And everybody starts to have another contradiction within the, the movement. Then another contradiction that arises is when the white people arrive, the white uh, supporters. How are we going to deal with them? Should we, have, should we accept their presence? Should we not accept? In which standards should we accept or not? What can we demand from them? What can we not? Uh, they have the right to stay, but uh, when is going to be the line that we are going to draw? You understand what I'm saying? So what you see during this how and a half that uh, lasts the movie, is that in order to do an action that might look simple, such as marching after one of us was the victim of a terrorist attack, even that you have to pass through a lot of contradiction within the oppressed, within the oppressed themselves. And why is so? Because the oppressed, as my father said in the book Rainbow of Desire, they are not just people that want something. Most case scenario, they are in this mode that is a subversive, submissive mode. Is it clear what I'm saying? On one side, they want things, they are submersive, they are subversive. 
On the other side, they don't want those things, they're submissive. They know that they can achieve and they don't know that they can achieve. They need to achieve and they don't need to achieve. They want to and they don't want to at the same time because of many different reasons. Like uh, things that I've told you already, you know, uh, in Islam there was a police attack and Dona Maria, Dona Maria, let's have a, a meeting in the square. We need to meet in the square. We need to make it clear to everybody that we are not going to accept this no longer. We need to show to the police that we are not going to accept this no longer. Arrives Dona Maria. She has all the reasons of the world for joining in. She has all the reasons of the world not to join in. By not joining, she's making herself safe. By not uh, by joining, she would make herself safe also. <clears throat> by not joining, she's putting herself and her baby in danger. By joining, she put herself and her baby in danger. You understand what I'm saying? So whenever you are going to create those characters, you will always have to think about this model over here, that on one side and on the other, that there is things for them to get and there is things for them to lose. That's why I didn't like the ally thing as uh, in the US people think about it. You have nothing to lose. Actually. It's just that you are not paying attention enough to the suffering of others and that's why you're not joining. Uh, and I would like to offer a different understanding that is you have reasons why to join and you have also reasons why not to join. And I think that is pretty common in our society. So I would like to offer a little bit of, you know, uh, there is, it's small changes actually that I'm doing, and it's inspired by Muriel Naissance, as I said on the first day. I'm going to put her here, Muriel Naissance. She was doing plays like this already. She didn't theorize about it, but that was the kind of play that she was doing. In a specific space, a neighborhood, a working space, a school, a campus, a church, there is a specific oppression. Oppression that we don't even need to see. We don't need to see the domestic violence. We don't need, even less, I think, to see <coughs> rape or a black person being murdered. We don't need those things because we know them already. There is a protagonist. The protagonist is a person that is oppressed. Maybe not the main oppressed. Maybe not the, the person that was brutalized by the police. Uh, that just got fired, but he's an oppressed, uh, or she is an oppressed, and she's going to talk with other oppressed <coughs> that are in this sub submersive, submissive mode, subversive, submissive mode. People that are like him, that are like her, but are not willing at that moment to do anything about oppression, to do anything against oppression. And we are going to show that there is, in any place like this, different categories of people that do construct this space and that they are oppressed somehow and that are not willing to do anything against oppression. Is it clear? Uh, let me do with you um, a play that was done by, I hope it's going to be okay, uh, there is a lot of, uh, okay, trigger, uh, triggers, uh, trigger warning. Okay, I'm going to give you a trigger warning. It's not going to be horrible, I'm not going to talk about it, uh, but it's a play that was created years ago uh, by uh, a group only of women in a campus of the US about the rape culture in this very campus. Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk about. Is that okay? Yes. So uh, let's move forward. The protagonist wants to do something about that. The protagonist wants to do something about it. She's a female student, Every uh, frat, uh, fraternity uh, party, there is terrible things that happen in those parties, and she wants the campus, the whole campus, to be talking about consent. Because even last week something happened, and we need to talk about consent. This female student, do you think that she's going to talk with whom first? Women. Women. Women that are? 
Victim of faith. Even I was going for even brother. Uh, women, but not in general. Women that are in this space, you know? Yeah. Friends, uh, is that okay if uh, we yeah. put... Do you think it would be okay, the, the, it's going to be reasonable, let's put it this way, that is, is realistic if the first group that she talks with is female friends. <coughs> mm -hmm. Female friends that are also students. Yeah. How they can answer in this mode? Subversive, submissive. Yes, <coughs> no. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what could be the reasons? I'm asking to you. Let's create a play together. The studies are more at risk. They want they paid a lot to do the studying and they want to concentrate on that. So they want to, you know, it's been already, uh, this week I've studied for more than uh, 60 hours already. And I wanted to pass those exams. I cannot fail those exams. You want us to talk with all the classes you have free time for doing it. I don't. I'm really sorry. I'm going to put myself first. That could be a contradiction that we could hear from one of those yeah. students. Is it realistic for you? Yeah. Okay. So, one more. They don't want to bring the limelight onto themselves because they're scared uh -huh. that that could open them to danger. That's, that's, uh, that's pretty often, no? That uh, those yeah. things can occur. And I, I must say that this contradiction is a very intertwined contradiction. Because basically she's saying, yes, I know that there is sexism, I know that there is the gender violence in this campus, and this is precisely why I don't want to do anything about it. Yeah. It's not because out of not knowing, it's because she knows that she doesn't want to do anything about it. Self-protection in front of so yes, I know that there is those things, and then I don't want to do anything about it, yes? A uh, loss of a uh, privilege with uh, men, so I have a boyfriend, or I like a man, uh, I'm heterosexual, I want their attention, and they will say that I am what, uh, stupid. If I denounce a man, or what's going to be my relationship with the man, or yeah. with my partner, my boyfriend, my boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. do you think that's uh, something that yeah. is real? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Some people said we too. <laughs> yeah, it's real. Yeah. I'm on a scholarship and I don't want to get in trouble with the institution. Oh, I'm in a scholarship and I don't want the boat to rock too hard. Uh, I've been the victim of sexual assault and I and the, the trauma to go into marches and uh -huh. speaking these words too yeah. much. Uh, I'm in pain. Yeah. So it's a little bit but even more uh, to that, uh, strong than the one that knows about the danger. She doesn't know, only know about the danger. She's been there. She knows what it feels like. And she is in pain and she's in trauma and she doesn't want to do anything about it. Let me tell you about uh, one that they created themselves and that I never thought about this contradiction before. I don't know if it would be a good uh, character for Forum Theatre, but I felt that it was a very realistic one that I never thought about that before. It was like this, it was one that was going, no, but what happened uh, last week with her? This is not a rape. <laughs> this is not a rape. Because if this was a rape, that, that was not a rape. Because she could not, she could not see in the other, the rape, in order to not see in herself the victim of rape. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I never thought about that before, but then I think that's very likely a contradiction that do occurs a lot. Yeah. It was similar to that. It was, it was some not popular one, but you've got women who they're like, well, it was. They knew each other, so it couldn't have been rape, or did she give consent, or the, what are the blurred boundaries? Mm. So it's someone that's so entrenched in... Sorry? I was yeah. self-blame. Yeah. So a woman that goes, well, we don't know the full story, and what if she... What mm. if it was... Okay, we can do that, but then remember that we need to... Uh, all of us, we are a little bit more submissive than subversive in our, our answers. Oh. So I'm going, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, but reasons why there would be something for her if she entered in the struggle. Don't put just the reason for not joining, mm -hmm. but also what would be in it for her. So this woman that is reproducing the dominant speech mm -hmm. is also victim somehow of the dominant speech. Maybe not in this specific form, not in this specific moment, mm -hmm. but she feels it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because otherwise we are just putting a little bit of yes 
and it's Zhe Zheng Gantik No. And yeah. could be that one of her best friends was raped who committed suicide from it, and she wants to, like, you know, stand for her dead friend. But that would be a reason for standing in. I, w I want characters that are in the balance, mm -hmm. that have a lot of reasons why to join in, and one or two strong reasons also for not joining. Sorry. I, just wanna, I was very recently, I was a juror in a, a rape case, and what you just said, said then really hits home. She was clearly raped, uh, this girl just around the corner from here. And in the jury, and I'll talk about it now, but I'm not sworn not to, but I will in the, the security of this space. That reason that you gave there, there was a, there was a group of dominant lads in the group who couldn't identify. If they identified the man as a rapist, they would be. Mm -hmm. But there was also a group of women, younger women, that they were joined by who exactly that, that you could tell that there was something that they'd experienced, but if they acknowledged that the woman who had been raped had been raped, they would be acknowledging that mm. about themselves, and they, they, they couldn't go to that space. And it was, it was very distressing. Uh, the legislation has moved to the point when it was clear that the woman was too drunk to give consent, but in acknowledging that amongst the jurors, particularly about the young, it was young people, they they couldn't because they would be admitting mm. they participated in that. So I, I, that's very insightful, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm I'm really sorry because uh, uh, you know uh, I understand that you are giving a lot of reasons and even stories that uh, you know. And at the same time, I need to take care of the whole process of yeah. moving forward. But yeah, when I was just going to say that um, that buying into the like the fiction that there are ways that you can stay safe, mm. I think there's like um, I mean, challenging that is hugely frightening to do because it means actually looking at the fact that like there there is no guaranteed way to stay safe, but also by like staying in that structure. You're not you're, safe neither. Yeah, and, but you're mm. like constricting your life. You're like mm. making your life smaller. Mm. So there's the like not wanting to live in fear, but also like confronting the reality that mm. there is no safe set of rules you can follow mm. that will keep mm. you safe. Can we, can we have those uh, two last comments and then we move? Yeah. Um, I believe in the cause. I think we need a change, but I'm an immigrant and I don't want to know the vote. Oh. Mm. Uh, some way similar from the I have a scholarship. Uh, or, yeah, but uh, but true, but this is true also, and as far as I understand, uh, <laughs> applies home, no? Uh, yeah, I want to be identified or not identified as a feminist, and as a feminist, I would be um, I would be against men, uh, so being identified as being against uh, men as being a negative, mm -hmm. but a positive about being a feminist that gives an identity, that maybe as a young woman, I had Mm. You know, more kind of political identity. It gives a political identity that I'm not sure I want. Mm. Okay, so that would be, and we see in a very few minutes, quite a lot of possibles uh, that I don't even want even to say the word a lie anymore. But people that could help, mm -hmm. that were uh, on the oppressed side, clearly, mm -hmm. and at the same time that were not. Uh, feeling at ease to do nothing against oppression because of their contradiction, entrenched contradiction. Mm -hmm. But in the same manner that we cannot blame Dona Maria because she's not joining, the character that you have said, I think that m most of them, or all of them, it would be difficult to, to be able to ju judge them morally for not entering. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Always with this thing of trying not to judge morally. We could do that with the male friends, but let's take another step, and uh, I think, uh, because it would be more or less similar, uh, it would be maybe the, the mirroring of certain things that were said here. Let's go to teachers, as they did. Teachers, what teachers can answer to that? It's a different social group that composed the campus, right? We agree. What teachers can say is when, uh, there is someone that arrives in their class at the end of the class, say, look, 
I wanted to talk about consent because last week, yet again, there was what teacher would you answer in this yes, no, subversive, submissive? I, I might, might be disciplined and lose my job. Yeah, I won't, would like to help, but I might get the discipline. Mm. That's something that is real here in Ireland. Scotland. Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I'm leaving right now. I'm so sorry. Sorry. You were so silent. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. I wanted to see if you were paying attention. <laughs> That's the real thing. Yeah, you want to have one? Similar, but the idea that perhaps they have some lived experience or the child has, but then they're worried about tenure. Uh, Live the experience, but worried about tenure. Yeah. yeah? Um, they care, but then their child is in that fraternity and it wants them to get in trouble. Oh, they care, but at the same time, that could be exposing their own. Their own. Yeah. There's, there's something about like being aware of the the power dynamics of like wading into the student body politic. Uh -huh. and there being like a political drive to stand on one side of an issue, but also a political drive to not like impose your power on students? Uh, I don't want to be the driving force yeah. uh, in this thing. I think it's great what you're doing, but as soon as a teacher comes, he's the, the center of everything. Yeah. And precisely for you to advance, I, I need you to lay back. Something like this? Yeah. <laughs> this looks a little bit uh, like a lie, no? But, uh, uh, but it might be it's, true. It's my job to support all of you students. I can't take your opinion about the other <laughs> okay, you? Uh, I'm just trying to formulate this, I don't have it exactly, but uh, as a teacher, it's been made clear to me uh, that I, I have a certain role, which is to deliver, I, I can't overstep my role into one of, this is an extreme kind of care role, or it kind of moves ah, into personal support. It's not a, a, my role as a teacher, it's, it's to job. teach you about feminism, not to practice oh. feminism. <laughs> Something like this? Because kind of like yeah. yeah. if I start caring about this, then how can I manage? Yeah, look, but remember what you're doing. Don't you think that you are doing more one side than the other? Yeah. You understand what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. What I'm telling you? Yeah. You are telling why re reasons why people would not join. But what I would like you is to show me the reason that there is something for her. If there was no longer police brutality, the kid could go in the street. Yeah? In service of belonging, I would really love to support the women. I would like to stand as a teacher who is representing the young women of this university. But then, the, the, then there is the other part. Mm -hmm. Yes and no at the same time. You just say the yes. It's sort of going off of the other physical role, like that's a different department from mine. I can put you in touch with who you would contact, <laughs> but it's not me. And then... If you stab someone that answers you like this, <laughs> is that a crime? <laughs> If I, if I get into politics and being an activist, I won't be respected as an academic, uh, even though I really care about these issues, you know? <laughs> they won't publish my work, it will go to activism and not academic. You have terrible teachers here in, uh, <laughs> yeah. in uh, UK. Because yeah. organizations call I, I, I want to be able to give feedback to the other court or to the police but I know that you will likely never get prosecution and it's like so I care about it's pointless yeah. it's pointless yeah. we can do it all the way but it's pointless one or two more because you have so many yeah, yeah. I don't have time because I've got my own problems uh -huh. and I'm a single parent and I've got to deal with that. Single parent. Rather than I can't take any more but responsibility. Just, but remember, you are putting more on <laughs> one side than on the other. Uh, yeah, you are yeah. doing a little bit like this, yeah. more than that. Yeah. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? I'm a single parent of a daughter. Of a daughter. Yeah. 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 Yes, exactly. <laughs> and my daughter just entered into college. <laughs> She's getting crazy. And a little boy looked down her pants today. <laughs> <laughs> in college. Okay. Thanks a lot. But uh, it was just as an exercise. No, I would like just to offer one of them that they, they put uh, out there because 
I don't know if the, the same laws applies here in um, Scotland. Scotland. <laughs> in the UK. Uh, so in a, I don't know if the same laws applies here in Scotland, but it was very impressive for me because she went to her feminist teacher, the teacher that teaches feminism, and she was really like, you know, it's because of you. It's because of you that cannot see, that I can see those things and can no longer accept it. It's because of you. So this is why I'm reaching out for your help in order to have a consensus, pro consent, uh, uh, consensus, uh, consent, 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 consent uh, project all over the campus. It's because of you that want to have that. It's because of you that I even understand and consent. Because that's not what happened in campus. Because last week, and we should be talking about this also. Last week, in a frat house, there was. If you give the name. It's mandatory for me to report. Mm. Does your friend know what is it like to report? Mm. Yeah. How hard it can be on people? Mm -hmm. So that's a law that exists in the US. I don't know if there is a law like this uh, in, uh, in Scotland, but uh, I don't think it's a very, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really understand the, 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 the rationale between, uh, behind the law. This mandatory thing because you can put people at risk by that. Yeah. Yeah. It's only under 18. Yeah. That's only under 18. That would yeah, under 18. Because when I yeah. went through the kids under the age of 16, I am more limited by what I got. If I hear that somebody mm. has been raped mm. or, I, yeah, I'm under obligation. Yeah. Self protection. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, but still, uh, I don't know. Uh, I should uh, talk to you about it, but later today, not right now. Uh, okay, so you understood how it works. The most difficult task that you will have right now is to create characters that are really yes, no. There is things for them in the change. There is a lot of things uh, uh, that they might lose by looking change. You might get a better uh, salary, better working condition. You might get fired. The two things are true. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, so before we start, <coughs> there is no question about this, the general thing. A protagonist in a space, like a church, a neighborhood, a factory, a campus, is fighting against an oppression, oppression that we know, don't necessarily see. He fights by finding all the oppressed people that have this kind of mode in which there is something in them for change, and there is something uh, they can lose something out of this change, out of this attempt to change. Is it clear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. And you really need to have a balance here. Yes. Is it for the triangle? No, the triangle is because it is uh, father, son, and fiat of the oppressed. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some water. <laughs> <laughs> is it clear? Uh, it's pedagogical. This one you will remember. <laughs> uh, so, is it clear the whole thing? Uh, yeah. Okay, so again, what I'm really going to stress for you uh, to figure out is to make those characters to have something to gain. Because most of the time, you make characters that only have something to lose. You is a very uh, general you, right? Uh, you, the students of my workshop in the uh, last 10 years. So try to uh, really have a contradiction. There is something in it for them. They, they are not allies in the, in the US meaning of the word. They are not just allies. They have something to gain out of it. They have something to lose, but they have something to gain. Is it clear? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Can you all stand up, please?